My greetings to everyone. So today's discussion is going to be based on wavefront and rays and also Huygens principle. First, probably in physics, we have studied about waves and their interactions. So in today's video, we will be dealing with waves that travel from one medium to another. In such a case, two things can happen. First, the part of the wave can bounce back into the original medium, which we referred as a reflection or the part of the wave can travel into the next medium, which is a transmission. Even when a wave travels into a new medium, the wave is typically bent or deformed in some way and is called as refraction. So we can combine these effects of reflecting bending waves to make the waves appear as if they are being recreated at different locations than they actually are. So if the waves in a question are light waves, then this means that we see see images at places distinct from where the objects themselves are. While most of our examples will involve light waves, and it is also important to realize that all types of waves will reflect and refract as they pass from one medium to another. Okay, let me give you one example. Let us start by thinking of dropping a stone in water and letting the ripples propagate outward. So sometime later, the ripples appear as it's been shown in this picture. And also some of the parts of the waves, they are obscured by other waves. So it's difficult to draw and visualize interactions between waves like this. Um, one such representation is a wave front, actual one part of the waves, because we already know that the waves are oscillating up and down and traveling outward. That means you should have a reasonable idea of what the wave is doing just by looking at the picture of the wave fronts. Okay, so a wave front generally is a line that would represent all of the parts of a wave that are actually in a phase and an equal number of wavelengths from the source of the wave. But also the shape of the wave front depends upon the nature of the source. So this means a point source will emit waves having a circular or spheric wave fronts, while a large extended source will emit waves whose wave fronts are effectively plain or flat. Let's now get to the best part of this lesson, which we are going to explain about the rays. So basically, a ray is a line extending outward from the source and also representing the direction of propagation of the wave at any point along it. So that means these, they are also perpendicular to wave fronts and we can simply represent them as wave in a different way, which that will be only considered as the direction which is particular piece of the wave is traveling. Uh, we can also join these directions and trace out a path of a particular piece of a wave. So generally these paths, they are called as rays. And also, they are always perpendicular to the wave fronts. So in these examples of rays, they are showing this, this picture as arrows. So that means that we drew a lot of rays going in all directions. And we also concentrated the rays in the part where we discussed that the wave fronts looking flat. So we can discuss also one more important quality of rays. And that is that when you are a far distance from the source of the wave, the rays are approximately parallel. So that means that the extra rays do not indicate that there is more energy in that part of the wave. So from these two, we know that rays are perpendicular to wave fronts. To clear confusion, as you see here, a transverse wave, such as an electromagnetic wave like light, as viewed from above and from the side, that is the direction of propagation is also perpendicular to the wave front or the wave crest and is represented by an arrow like a ray. Now let's discuss about the amazing scientists who developed a very useful technique for determining in detail how and where the waves actually uh, propagated. So first he stated that in every point on a wave front it's actually a source of wavelets that will then spread out in the forward direction, but at the same speed as the wave itself. Then after that, the new wavefront will be a line tangent to all of the wavelets. 
Okay, now let's look at an example here that he said its principle applied to straight wavefront, which after that each point on the wavefront it emitted a semicircular wavelength that moves at distance only. So in easier words, I would say that uh, a wavefront is the long edge that moves. For example, the crest or the true. So in the, each point of the wavefront it emits a semicircular wave that will then move at the propagation speed, which we call it as V or the velocity. So these are drawn at the time that we have to also have it in our formula, which is T, so that they have moved a distance of S equals V velocity times time. So it's S equals V times T. Uh, after that, the new wavefront is a line tangent to the wavelets. And this is where we would expect the wave to be a time t later on okay so in conclusions we know that huygens principle works for all types of waves including the water waves the sound waves and also the light waves okay ladies and gentlemen thanks for watching today's video and i hope you understood what wavefronts rays and also huygens principle are